Hi, in this cast, I'm going to demo how to create a minimal microservice with Rust and the Hypercrate. Microservices are tiny independent servers that perform specific tasks. So the first thing you'll need is the Rust toolchain. To install Rust, visit www.rust-lang.org or rustup.rs. On the first, here you can see that here's the command to install the Rust toolchain for the Mac. And on rust.rs, you've got the same command. So visit those sites to install the Rust compiler and toolchain for your operating system. If you already have Rust installed like I do, then now is probably a good idea to check that you've got the latest version. The stable channel releases a new version around every six weeks or so, and the nightly is released every night. So Rust up, update, and you can see that I've already got the latest versions of both channels installed. For what we're building here, the stable channel is fine. So we can get going using Cargo to make a new project called Rust-Microservice. So we type cargo new Rust microservice. And cargo is the package manager that Rust uses. It's similar to NPM that Node uses. I'll now jump into that directory that cargo has just created. And we can see that it's created a source subfolder and cargo toml. Now we're going to add the hypercrate dependency in our toml file. You can hack the toml file here, but I find that you need to know in advance what the version number is of the crate you're going to add. To do that, you can go over to crates.io and you can see you'll have to look up each crate and dependency you're you're adding which can be a bit of a pain if you've got lots of dependencies so that's one way of adding it what i like to do is use a cargo subcommand the subcommand i use is called cargo hyphen edit i already have this installed if you want to install it it's a simple case of cargo install cargo dash edit. I've already got it installed here, so I could upgrade it by using the force flag. To see your cargo subcommands, you can type cargo install dash dash list, and this will show you all of your cargo subcommands. You can see that here I have cargo edit and its associated subcommands already installed. And what this allows us to do is very simply add our dependencies through the command line. So if I say cargo add hyper, we can see that that's added the latest dependency for us here. Now we're going to jump over to our main.rs file and we're going to use those types from a hyper crate. And now let's create a socket address we can bind to. A socket address consists of an IP address and a poor number. And then our server handler. And to keep things simple, I'm just going to drop any errors for now. And then we can start our server. Now from the console, we can type cargo run. And that will pull in all of our crates and dependencies. 
once it's done that, it will compile our microservice and we should be able to hit it via our socket address we configured. And there we are, our microservice is up and running. It's not doing much yet, but now we can start to build it out. Next, we'll adjust the types we use from our hypercrate. Futures are a similar concept to async and await in JavaScript and C Sharp. Format is used to format arguments at runtime into strings, similar to C Sharp's printf function. Arc is a thread safe reference counting pointer. We're going to use mutex to protect our shared data. Basically, it checks that only one thread can access our shared data at a time. Slab is a collection type that isn't part of the standard library, so we'll add this as a dependency. It's useful as it's similar to a vector, but it returns the key when storing a value. We'll use regular expressions along with the lazy static macro so we can construct pattern matching for our REST requests. Now we'll add these additional crates to our cargo.toml file. Now let's refactor our main function to use a separate request handler function to handle our REST requests. Here I'll define our in-memory product DB so we have something to play with. And now we can build our request handler function. So our request handler expects a request, but it doesn't return a simple response. Instead, it returns a future result. We'll continue to build this out shortly, but first let's build our constants, types, and structs we need. Here we'll define our regular expression constants using the lazy static macro to match our rest paths. Now we can continue to build out our request handler. We'll use a combination of if and match statements to detect the correct rest method from the path.
So here we have built out a minimal microservice that uses regular expressions to match REST compliant methods. So now once again, we can test our microservice. Microservice is now running. If we go to localhost, we can see that our, HT our inline HTML is returned. Here I'm using Postman to navigate to the product URL. And if we send a request, we can see that the in-memory database is incremented by one. And then if we go to the products URL, then we can see that the database is being in in memory database is being iterated and displayed. So there we have a minimal microservice written in Rust using the hypercrate futures crate and employing standard REST methods.